Norse mythology so much that we end up going into their historical mm -hmm. archives. But how about Scotland? Any, any locations that you visited? Um, so, I have yet to visit, so I live in London now. Um, I have yet to visit um, Orkney Isles, which is where the majority of this book takes place. Um, but I've been to um, Isle of Skye for a month with, it's lovely, isn't it? It's beautiful. Where was your favorite place? Oh, I, I just loved being on the Isle of Skye. We stayed in an Airbnb there, and the, the owner of the bed and breakfast just made us breakfast. This lovely gentleman named Alan, he made us wonderful breakfast every morning, and we took this bus tour around to see all the sights and stuff. It's just so gorgeous out there. We saw where they were filming Game of Thrones, and there were a lot of cool sights there. I was invited to see somebody's sheep. Sheep? Sheep? sheep. There are a lot of sheep there. I know, but some, some, some woman... Um, to to see the sheep? No, no, no. This um, girl came up to me. She's like, oh, do you want to see my father's sheep herd? Sure. I was like, yeah. <laughs> sure, show it to us. We showed up, though. Um, but um, they're so friendly there. I know, it was kind of weird. Kind of great. Well, I feel like that Highland. could be like a horror film. Uh, do you remember the Highland cows? The Highland coos? Oh, they my God. They so stalk me all the time. The Highland fluffy coos. Cows. They are lazy. They don't want to move. They want to block your <laughs> they car. Just chill. And they will totally try to trample you if you get in their way. Well, um, only that. because Lindsay and I were like, oh, they look friendly, so we got out of our car. And they were like, nope. Boom. Oh. And we're like, okay, we're going back in the car. <laughs> we ended up running the car into a ditch. Um, oh, no. Oh, God. And getting hit by a semi truck, but that was fine. We're okay. <laughs> so that's how. Isn't that how breaking time begins, though? With yeah, car that's actually yeah. one of those yeah. things. Yeah. 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 So uh, uh, Clara almost hits Callum with a car, almost for the insurance claim. Um, but it was one of the, all these inspirations come from everyday aspects of my life. Because for me, I'm not sure if you guys realize this with your writing, but sometimes people can be like, "Do you base your life off of?" your character's lives, or no, no, your character's lives after your life. Mm -hmm. um, honestly, I would love to base my life off of my character's lives. Right? They're so much more interesting. <laughs> how much of you, though, do you, talking about breaking time, yeah. how much of you is in Clara? Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So, when I was writing Xenopo Nexus, I decided that I wanted to be completely separate, because I thought yeah, that I had to be. Um, because I was scared of retaliation towards me being too much of my characters. Mm -hmm. So I completely separated myself from it. Um, and that was saddening because I feel like when you are a writer, you're, you should be allowed to feel like you can add yourself into the character. Mm -hmm. Not completely, it's not like you're writing a character directly from yourself, but their aspects and their attributes right. can add to their story. So when it came to Clara, um, I decided, that's it. I'm gonna do this. I'm being very, very polite this time. Yeah. Yesterday I was not very polite with my um, terminal. <laughs> um, but um, well, your writing what makes you happy. You, yes. you literally wrote a book that is authentic and yeah. it's what you wanted to write. It's based on trauma, uh, not just trauma, but mythology, right. love of Scotland, yeah. and I wanted to hone into that because I'm like, you know what? You never know when when you're gonna have the next book published. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Might as well write book that you want to write That's beyond right. anybody's expectations mm -hmm. or Walter needs. Mm -hmm. It's about you. Yeah. Speaking as a reader, I can always tell when an author isn't passionate about what they're writing. Like, they oh, don't really yeah. care. Like, this is just the book yeah. that they're just putting out project. there. Yeah. Right. Like, it's part of their contract, or they felt like they should write to the trend or whatever. And you can just tell when their heart isn't in it. Yeah. So the fact that Breaking Time is so much you, um, not literally you, but, you know, like, parts yeah. of what you love and parts of what inspire you, I think that makes it feel very authentic and romantic. I think people will recognize that. I mean, look, I know that, um, Julie, you went to Ireland. I did, yeah. Did that inspire you at all with your novels? Yeah, yeah, I think so. Not directly, but I've definitely um, taken a lot of photos on my travels. I taught a class in Ireland right before the pandemic, so it was a writer's retreat that I got invited on. I had gone back in 2015, and it was just getting the scenery, setting the mood, especially for my Disney book, Broken Wish, which yeah. is set in the countryside of Germany which is completely different, but you know, like the, the rustic feel, the, the history and the mythology, like that I could bring to my book. Yeah. So I'm glad that you could do that with Scotland. Yeah. 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 I mean, like on my publisher, they're like, yes, you can go up to Scotland, you can take um, a road trip, you do exactly that they talk, and I'm like, I work full time. 
I will try to do this, but I don't think I can. Um, but, but there is but, something magical about visiting these I mean, locations. but I would love to go up to Scotland, so I plan on doing so um, <laughs> once I get back to England. Um, because it's one of those things, like, I can easily get up to Scotland and... It's not easily, I have to be honest. Yeah, it's like, do you take a train, or...? I could take a train, but I don't mm -hmm. like to drive. Okay. So I like to still harness my uh, driving skills, which mm -hmm. are very poor. Um, <laughs> My boyfriend does not know that yet, <laughs> um, uh, but he can't drive, so it's fine. Um, uh, but when it comes to my friends driving with me, um, if you do know how to drive, they're like, Sasha, do you mind if we take over the wheel? <laughs> I'm like, no, I'm fine. I, I'm a resident here. I can do this. Mm -hmm. It's fine. Um, and it, anyways, like, it ended up me um, having them take over the wheel uh, about two hours into it, and I plan on having that happen in the next month when I do plan on going back up to Scotland because there's the shortest plane ride in the world oh, from Scotland, from yeah. the Orkney Isles. It's three minutes long. What? And so I will totally take wow. that flight. <laughs> but it only happens if it's a clear day, non-foggy, no mm -hmm. issues. Also, I'm a plane enthusiast, so I will know what a plane is just by a flight over me. Um, it's been my pandemic uh, mm -hmm. venture. Yeah. Yeah, you would text me random facts. <laughs> now I'm like, I'm or, scared or of flying now. No, but, no I know. That's why I'm scared of flying. Whenever I'm taking off, I'm like. <laughs> Sasha would be like, there are a thousand reasons and a thousand ways that this can happen right now to you. Isn't that fascinating? Oh, I'm like, no, that's no, that, not I'm fascinating. I'm a really good one, guys, obviously. <laughs> obviously. Um, but luckily, we're flying to Miami tomorrow. Oh, fun. And you're going to give me how no, many No, I'm going to be like going like this. Yeah, sure. <laughs> JD's going to put his earplugs in. Just be like, oh, okay, uh-huh. We'll just ignore uh -huh. for two hours. It'll be fine. We'll be like, let's have a moment of lift. <laughs> no, but like, it's one of those things. Uh, have you guys had any inspirations that were particular towards your own novels that really stemmed your, um, just your journey? Yeah, JD, did you do any traveling or anything like that? Um, I did. So for The Broken Miracle, which was the, not the well, part two came out in April, um, that was an interesting project because the, the, the character is real and is alive. So I actually had to go to this hospital in Utah where they did the heart mm. transplant and talk wow. to doctors and nurses to understand this anatomy of being born with half a heart. What happens? Why are you blue? Why are your lips blue? Mm -hmm. Why don't you breathe? And not only that, but I got, I wanted to walk through the halls that he did during recovery mm. uh, and just visiting this yeah. location that meant so much to someone. I think he had over a hundred surgeries wow. in his life. I mean, he's 50. Wow. Spoiler alert, he's alive. <laughs> he survives. Oh! You know, but th that was just... hundred surgeries? Yes. It's a wow. cow. So that was, that was quite the experience. Yeah. What you? That's cool. No, I, I need to travel more, I think. This well, pandemic has really thrown come a to London. my style. <laughs> I know, I want to go to London yeah. so much. I actually had to cancel a, London's, a London writer's retreat that I was gonna do this summer because my middle grade book is coming out like two days after I return. And I'm like, if I can't come back to the US or if COVID rears its ugly head again, you know, it's too much of a risk. Come next retreat year. to my house. Okay, okay, deal, <laughs> deal. Um, and you can tell me all about your next book in the breaking yes, time. Yes. Is there a sequel? It's, yeah, is it a There's duology? A yeah. Okay, yes. okay. Do we have yeah. yeah. Yes, we do, but we're not saying it. Oh, you're not? Can you give us a hint? FF. Any guess? <laughs> okay, so I've always come up with my titles of my books, um, but my editor came up with this title because I was like, I have no freaking idea what to title this book. And she's like, okay, I have a few. I'm like, thank God. Nice. Um, um, and it's amazing because um, the publishing house I work for as the social media marketing manager, um, I'm like, okay, I know that we title all of our books and title the authors. Mm -hmm. and I was like, that's weird. <laughs> But now I'm like, now I understand because you guys know it from a distant point of view. Uh -huh. So you can look into it right. in a practical point of view. They're unbiased. It was going to be yeah. a defined destiny, but it turns out there's like 20 billion other books. Defined <laughs> destiny? Yeah, there's 20 billion other books piled down. Really? So we're like, we're not doing that. So it's FF. Okay. How did you come up with Breaking Time? Did you come so, up with that or did they? No, I did. Um, you did. So um, one of my friends, Christine Riccio, she had a book called um, um, again, but better. And I thought that um, articulating your um, story through your title was so important, mm -hmm. um, even in the smallest of ways. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, like, if you don't want, know what Zenith or Nexus means, you will not know what the story <laughs> means. I mean, like, sometimes I forget. <laughs> 
So I decided, like, you know, Breaking Time is about Clara literally trying to break time mm -hmm. um, to restore it. Mm -hmm. um, and I love that title, and so that's why it took me five years to come up with it, and then six wow. years to solidify it. Then now we are here, um, yeah. seven years later. Because it was Project Red for a while, oh, yeah. right? So oh, was that always just like a working, like a public title? It was title? always, yeah, it was always Project, I still call Red. It Project Red. I still call it Project Red, too. Me, too. <laughs> <laughs> um, it will always be Project Red, and I try to paint my nails red, but then I forgot, and I keep on forgetting, so. It's all good, just pretend they're um, red. And um, talking about characters and journeys, uh, tell us a little bit about your creative process mm -hmm. with these characters. What was it like outlining? Yeah. Creating their arts. Did you have fun? Did you cry? I didn't cry. Right. Okay. Maybe I'm emotionless. <laughs> um, no, um, I feel like I put a lot of myself into these characters, and it's very therapeutic because, like, when it comes to crafting your characters, it's so important to make sure that you relate to them in some connotation, even though it may be the slightest of terms. Mm -hmm. For example, Andy from the Andromeda Saga. I mean, I don't chop up people's heads with an electric blade, mm -hmm. but I can relate to her trauma <laughs> of being in a bad relationship, you know? So when it comes to um, Breaking Time, I honed in on those aspects um, of parental loss, um, um, what people call disabilities, I call them superpowers. Um, I have dyslexia and ADD, severe, um, and I've always found them as struggle points in my life, but now I call them superpowers, because that's what I truly believe them to be. Um, they make you who you are, and I believe that mm -hmm. that is beautiful. Uh, so when it came to me creating um, my characters, I was like, what can I do to make them be relatable to others, mm -hmm. but also relatable to myself? I do completely forget this um, question, because I am I'm so jet lag, guys, by the way. <laughs> what time is it right now? Oh, it's 7.39. So what time is it in London? It's 1 a.m. Past midnight. <laughs> I'm doing great. <laughs> I just flew in yesterday. Good. Massive regret. <laughs> um, my folks were like, do you guys want to uh, do you want to fly in the day before? I'm like, no, I'm gonna be fine. I have to be at work on Monday. No. <laughs> but when it comes to my characters, um, that's what you asked, right? Yep. Yeah. Um, is that I wanted them to be relatable to so many more people than just myself, mm -hmm. just to others. I want them to be um, reminiscent upon different struggles in life that I've experienced, but other people have experienced that I know closely. Um, it's important to have characters that are not just relatable, but also that show you kind of a way out in a way, but not necessarily your way out, but it can show you a way. Right. Um, because your way out from difficult circumstances may take years, mm -hmm. but knowing that you are not alone is a beautiful, beautiful thing. Absolutely. Um, and I find that very inspirational. And my characters, um, I mean, my dad passed away last year, yeah. um, and my mom passed away nine years ago, um, mm -hmm. and when it came to writing this book, it was so therapeutic for me, mm -hmm. because I was able to share my grief for sure. through creative terms that would make my parents proud. Yeah. So I did that, and I'm so proud of this, and I know that they would be as well. So from that, I'm just so grateful that I am able to walk for them in literary terms through this book. That's so lovely. It's been such a journey for you too because you said that this took you six years. This is a it took, it took eight years, years now. It, this is eight years in the making. Six years until it got um, um, acquired yeah. by Harper Collins. Okay, so all that time were you querying? Were you sending it out no, to agents? I was or trying to write it. You're trying to write it. <laughs> no, because like I had two other books in the making. Right. Um, so right. I was seeing it for Nexus. Um, but this book, actually, has a funny story behind it. Yeah, tell us. Okay, I will. <laughs> um, this says, n I can never tell us in the UK because nobody would care. Um, so I grew up in Illinois, and we would go take road trips and field trips all the time to Southern Illinois. I don't know why. Um, there's nothing over there at all besides the Abraham Lincoln statue. Mm -hmm. And that's what inspired me. <laughs> so I looked at the Abraham Lincoln statue on the side of the road as we were driving past it in our school bus. And I was like, what would it be like for somebody from that time to come into present day and see it? How would they feel? What would mm. they think? Would they be amazed or like horror struck? Um, probably that. Um, or would they be um, inspired by what they 
predicted for the future. Mm -hmm. Abraham Lincoln is just a figurehead for this. Um, not necessarily him exploring my life, but um, I was seeing this giant statue of him, and I'm like, okay, what would he do? Yeah. What would he do if he saw an airplane fly overhead? So I wrote that into my book. That was like the magical cookie That's um, so in my cool. book that so I cool. wanted to write yeah, towards. That was the spark. And we almost wrote it out of the book. Because. See? Yeah. Really? Really? The scene where he sees a plane. Yeah. And you know, I'm like, no. We're keeping well, I thought this. Yeah, we're <laughs> keeping this. Um, because it's a beautiful aspect of the past and the present. And that yeah. has a lot of connotations towards um, just like the past being like pre COVID versus post COVID. Right. I know. How is that like? Mm -hmm. You know, wearing face masks versus not. Like, it's one of those things that like we forget um, about past, present, future, whatever mm -hmm. it is, because we're so focused on the present, and so I'm like, what would an Abraham Lincoln think yeah. if he saw an airplane? Yeah. So, um, Callum sees an airplane in this book, and I'm so grateful that scene stayed in. Yeah, I'm glad too. It's comical, and it's also, like, you kind of want to give him a big hug, and be like, okay. it's okay, it's okay, it's okay, it's, okay. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's not a killing monster. And so if I was a giant bird, that would be fucking, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But that's funny that you're saying that and we're in Boston because I feel like Boston is a city where the modern and the historical are just mishmashed. Come on, yeah. You can walk down the street no, completely. and see a skyscraper next to this historic church. Exactly. Just like the Boston Public Library. Yeah. I feel like that's a perfect um, example of seeing the modern leads mm -hmm. to the past. Right. Because you see the modern um, skyscrapers, but you see the past yeah. buildings. Yeah. And that's kind of like London as well. Oh, really? Yeah, sometimes. Otherwise, it's just like, okay, this is an old building. <laughs> you guys want to put some scaffolding up there and just like kind of like re-engineer it. Yeah. Um, but um, it's beautiful to see the past and the present. Yeah. And what about creative challenges? There's so much at play mm -hmm. here. So I'm going to ask you guys that Ooh. first. Creative challenges? Ooh. Why don't you go first? Oh my god, me. I thought that was such a great question for her. I was like, no, what about you? Oh, <laughs> Uno reverse. <laughs> um, do you mean what part of the creative process is yeah, most challenging? Yeah. Or I guess for me it's revisions, because I really don't like revising <laughs> books. Mm -hmm. I love that magic of having a blank page. A lot of people don't. A lot of people hate that part. Yeah. But I love having a blank page and just going, just typing down anything that I can think of, because I'm putting something into the world that has never been in the world in that exact form, and that's as close to magic yeah. as we can get. Um, but then the revising, like when you actually have the draft, and my editor's like, no, this is wrong, I don't yeah. like this, this part sucks. Or she, she doesn't say that part sucks, but you know what I mean. They She's say like, that a very long space. edit letter. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah so it's like, like a yeah. nine-page edit letter. Do you guys get long? Oh, I've had a 12-page edit letter. <laughs> oh, oh, she beat me. Um, yeah. But yeah, I just hate it. love the Yeah, because you pull out one piece from your mm -hmm. book, and everything yeah. could collapse if you don't yeah. bolster the rest yeah, of it. Exactly. So what about you, J.D.? Um, so the first time... Much like you, the first time you make it public, get into your team, mm -hmm. and then you get those notes, and you're like, yep. "This is just not my vision." It's like, no, it still is. We're making it better, okay. mm -hmm. and to understand that, so that's a bit of a challenge for me because yeah. I can be, I, I don't want to say proud, protective, protective, yeah. exactly. I'm protective of my work for sure. So, and, and even with the broken miracle, mm -hmm. writing about someone else's life and yeah. having them edit that yeah that's scary oh my it is God, yeah was... it's like putting your heart in a plate and being like okay yeah. cut it up very proud but <laughs> tell me everything that's wrong with it you guys yep. are amazing very proud but i'm done with that one <laughs> <laughs> am i amazing? amazing it's like whenever i have my annual review at work i'm like rip me apart and they're like you okay so i'm like I brought in 12 page edit letters. I'm fine. You're, you're, you've got dragon skin by yeah, now. Yeah, you're ready yeah, for anything. You're, 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 you're I good. feel like yeah. critique is one of the things that could be lovely, especially from for sure. ones that you trust. Yes. Oh, um, that's, that's important. Yep. Um, yeah, that's I important. always, like, whenever people think, like, do you look at your reviews? I'm like, no, I don't, but my friends do. Mm -hmm. And they give me the critique in a Word document that is actually oh, nice. accurate towards my writing. Um, so I don't have to suffer with my own mental health. Yeah. Because so I'm a very emotional person. Yeah. Yeah, it's hard to look at your reviews, and those aren't for you anyway. Yeah. Exactly. You know, it's for, for the readers, readers. it's for yeah. the people, it's not a part of business. Exactly. We respect that, yeah. and um, I think that is a very controversial opinion. Mm -hmm. um, but it's one that the majority of authors actually stand yeah. by. Yeah. Um, and uh, when it came to me realizing that, I'm like, great, okay, JD, here you go. <laughs> 
Iggy's been one of my best friends for That's over funny. a decade. Aww. Okay, you've seen it all. You've seen the whole journey. Yeah. How, have you, how have you dealt with me? <laughs> for a decade. Have I dealt with you? No. <laughs> no, it's been, it's been awesome. I mean, we... I just gave you the worst pat on the back in the yeah. universe, but it's fine. <laughs> it's okay. I mean, we... we Rick Baxter, for those of you who didn't know, we met through Instagram during oh. 2012. When I was 15. <laughs> that was wow. so bad. No, it was, it was not so bad. It was the rise of the book Instagram tube, yeah. community, okay. BookTube. And I was freaking out. They see, you offered me a free book. Yeah, and, and oh all God, I, I wanted, wow. all I wanted was, okay, I wrote this book. Nobody wanted it. Does anybody want to read <laughs> yeah, it? Yeah, <laughs> I do. I do. And I... Uh, saw your account, and I'm like, hey, do you want to read this Fallen Angel book that I wrote? And I love that. like, yes! Aww. Oh my god, that's cool. I yeah. freaked out to my dad. I was like, dad, I got a free book. <laughs> I got my first ever book. book. He's like, thank god. He's like, so much fun. money on your books. Oh my god. Um, then, uh, then after that, he saw paying for my books, so I started yeah. having to pay for my own books. What yeah. a lovely beginning. So you yeah. guys met because of books, and yeah. you're together, and yeah. now you're writing books and going on I mean, we're together. checking the hotel today, but the guy said, are you on your honeymoon? I'm like, why would we have a honeymoon in <laughs> You should say yes, because then they'll give you freebies and stuff. We should have done that. Wait, wait, that. we can say that. Yeah, I mean, we, we, we should have said that. Yes, we just I just had my boyfriend would like this. this. Or we're going to be like, no, we're siblings. What are you talking about? <laughs> I, I wish we said siblings. Gross. That would have made him feel even more awkward. No. But it, 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 there's such a... One thing that we really see around books is community. Mm -hmm. Communities are built. We meet people. And... How do you guys see the future of the book community? Question to both of you. Yeah, I mean, for me, I've been on social media for so long. I saw the other day that I had been on Twitter for like 13 or 12 years or wow. something really? crazy like that. Yeah. So I'm kind of pulling off of social media because I feel like it's it's hurting my my ability to write without voices in my head, and it's <laughs> it's hard to focus, you know. So yeah. I feel like I've sort of pulled away from the community, but the people that I've met there. I still keep in touch with them. It's yeah. so important to have people who understand your journey as a writer, mm -hmm. because most people who don't write don't get it. They don't know how hard it is to sit down and pull something out of your brain from nothing, and then put it out into the world and have people rip it apart, you know? So it's it's something very unique that you need to share with other people, because it's so isolating. It really is. Well, that's why I used to come over to both of your houses. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I remember you I would, writing. I would write the, the journey, first chapter. including Toby's house. Hi, Toby. <laughs> <laughs> and I would put my way over. I'm like, do you want to hang out? Do you want to hang out? <laughs> Yo, she sent me the first chapter. Hey, I wrote the sweet scene. I tried to come over to your house, She wrote me the first chapter of Breaking Time at my house. Yeah. She's like, can I yeah. you? I was like, can we have a sleepover? No, it's like, um, I had some of my most amazing friends here. Toby over there. Hi, Toby. Hi. Hi. Oh, sorry, I embarrassed everyone. Also, my sister right there. Say hi. It's a hi. No, but like when it comes to like literally um, collaborating, yeah. I feel like you don't need to collaborate on a book, but collaborate right. on ideas. Exactly. And just be supportive of one another. Yeah. Because it's so important. Like um, your experiences, your love for each other, yeah. and also your love for the art of literacy is so vital towards the existence of it. Of course, yeah, and that's why we're so happy to be here celebrating with you tonight, celebrating this beautiful book, Breaking yes. Time. Um, should we open the floor to yes. Q&A? Yeah. Yeah. Milla, what's your question? Oh, your she has a question, the right there. Oh, no, no, I, I, I <laughs> pre <-dropped laughs> that. Is that you on the cover? Okay. Oh, no, it's not me on the cover. <laughs> Controversy. No, um, that's one of the most often asked questions. And I'm like, no, it's not me on the cover. It's actually a model. <laughs> but the model is off of my aesthetic. She does me. And I'm like, yeah. okay, what's my aesthetic? Like, um, pasta? And that dress that you wore. Yeah, it, it was like my prom, prom, dress. Like prom dress. You made me wear that at your house. I did. So you could take photos. I have been I in that prom dress. It's I already wear it. Tina, you're next. <laughs> okay, Get ready. Only, only if there are pictures online. Absolutely. Let's do it. She'll pose you too. She had me going. Let's you do know. it. I've had her do so many weird things. <laughs> Him too. Those two as well. It's okay. <laughs> you had me in a dress in Prague in winter with no jacket. <laughs> and it's mostly me now. Sasha would do that. You know? <laughs> Memories I'm really perfect, grateful for my friend. The moment. <laughs> Kaylee, did I ever make you any, do anything weird uh, in we school? We did the. Oh, the Harry Potter the shoe. Harry Potter <laughs> shoe. We <laughs> did the fandoms collide shoe. We made <laughs> a lot of YouTube videos. Of you remember that guy? No, we did. We did a. Uh, oh, uh, same. Oh, cow. Cow. Yeah. Wait, 
do you remember, um, you made me dress up as, uh, Yuko when you were an anime. Oh, oh what? That was so cool. I think you just, wait, can I, I join you? this? Because I want to be Azula so bad. <laughs> Should we redo it? I would totally dress up as her. It was so yeah. funny. Like, the amount of, like, I like my smile is so big. Like, I don't like, like, don't worry. You. I promise. I forgot to go. And Aang. <laughs> I'm not embarrassed. I'm just laughing. It's like nice. we were watching all of the Avatar. Yeah, we, uh, we, we watched you, all of it. Yeah, we made you watch it because you had never seen it before. And now I'm grateful. It's yeah. a great Proper. show, isn't it? Yeah. Water, oh. air, fire. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so the cover is not you. You are stating that definitively. That's oh, yeah, that too. I'm cover. sorry, we got into the ropes of me. Like, I uh, forced my friends yeah. into doing things that they don't want to do, but they love me. So they <laughs> is, is it not the world will never know? At least, like, I haven't, like, made my boyfriend do anything yet. There you go. It's only time. <laughs> <laughs> only a matter of time. Any other questions? Yeah. <laughs> oh! oh. Ooh, I like need for the romance in your book. Do you take like do you, are you inspired by your own relationship, your past relationships? Just like how do you mm -hmm. like use what your experience and your relationship experience, but not write your exact relationship? Like how yeah, do you feel about great that? question. Exactly. Um. So when I was uh, writing this book, um, actually, not pretty, but I was with um my ex boyfriend, um, and. I learned a lot from that, mm -hmm. and I learned what is love beyond that. Um, so I was grateful to know that I love myself more, mm -hmm. and I love my own self to the extent that is beyond any man. And that's what Clara's respect is, because he, she was like this really weird guy at the beginning. <laughs> um, <laughs> like, <laughs> Stephen. So actually Steven. there's a crossover in our books. Stephen's from his book. The the little yeah. Yeah. I love the a dad bod. No, 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 yeah, I forget. It's her ex boyfriend. But, like, I yes. love a good dad That's so cool. Okay, but, like, we don't, like, same this, universe. The dad bod. Yeah, the dad bod. The dad bod. <laughs> um, but, um, um, so when it came to the love aspect, feeling loved is so important, but I felt loved beyond relationships mm -hmm. and my friendships. Mm -hmm. um, even when I was in a relationship. So, um, when it came to Clara, I wanted um, Cal and Clara to love each other as a friend, but also as a partner. Yeah. Um, because, first of all, in young adult books, we all know it happens really fast. Mm -hmm. I'm like, what the heck is this? You know, it's like two weeks. <laughs> insta love. You're all, in, it's literally insta love. And this is insta love. And I will be totally honest with that. But um, there is insta love. Um, there is, like, respecting your partner if you need them for a long time as a mm -hmm. friend. Like me and my partner, um, uh, but when it comes to like this book, just go with it. <laughs> but it's about respecting yourself first mm -hmm. and knowing that you love yourself, um, and that's what I can share the most because these people yeah. have been with me throughout so many ups and downs, mm -hmm. and um, you too. <laughs> um, Great inspiration. And um, I'm really grateful that I have friends first, men second. Yeah, I like that. Also, you're a man, but you're, you're first. He's a friend. <laughs> oh, guys. So cute. Oh. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, I'm fucking with your hair. Sorry. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Else? Any other questions? Yeah. Yeah, I was just wondering, because you wrote your book with Lindsay, um, what were some of the differences, whether it be like challenges or positive aspects that come with writing a book with someone else? And then it's lonely. It so. Is that question? Sorry, I don't talk very much. No, no, it's okay. No, you can oh, no, 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 I can repeat it. Um, yeah. um, with Lindsay, yeah, um, the writing difference? the book with Lindsay versus writing it solo, right? Right. It's lonely, um, but then I learned that I have friends around, and I still have Lindsay around, mm -hmm. and I've had the most amazing friends. Toby and I have been to bookshops together, to And we did a lot of writing books. retreats before COVID. We did right? a lot of writing retreats. <laughs> yeah. This is great. Great. Vermont. 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 We all went to Vermont. With the sulfur water. The sulfur water. You remember the mice? The mice. <laughs> Goodness. The the horror film. Yeah. Okay, this one. Also, guys, we have a um, we have a um, horror film that is now streaming on Amazon. I've seen that movie. Oh, is that the retreat that you guys filmed it at? So, it's um, on YouTube, you guys. Yeah. yeah. 
Is it? No, it's so now being um, exclusively streamed on Amazon yeah. oh and gosh, other streaming That's so cool. It was so good. Watch Anyways, it's, it's called amazing. Retreat. Um, really Chubby's an amazing actress. <laughs> and also <laughs> Simon stole the show. Um, but when it came to... Um, when you were writing with Lindsay. Lindsay. Yeah, was it hard? Because I feel like writing with someone would be tough. I me. loved it. I loved so that writing. I, I love being cool friends you. with people, as you guys know. Yeah. Um, okay, wait. You four. What is my mode of conversation? From text messaging, FaceTime, or phone calls? FaceTime. 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 <laughs> That's it. Okay. <laughs> um, I'd love to see my friends' faces and... I'm so annoying. <laughs> because I, I love FaceTiming them because I don't get to see them on a daily basis. Yeah. So when we got to um, do running retreats, when we got to go and just running coffee shops, mm -hmm. having FaceTime is the next best thing mm -hmm. when you live across the ocean. <laughs> um, and I'm so grateful for that. Yeah. Thanks for dealing with me, guys. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. <laughs> but um, when it comes to Lindsay, um, I still message her all the time. I love her to bed. Aww, her babies are so cute! <laughs> and I'm like, I hate what the heck? Heck? But I'm like, oh, they're so cute. Like, they're Zion baby. and... Yeah, he's a nice quarterback, for sure. Hello, baby girl. Oh, I love her. <laughs> they're so cute. Yeah. Any other questions? Can you did the sign? Yeah. Oh, there we go. Yeah, I'll say that. So when you were writing, have you, like, did you previously go to Scotland, or were you also, like, writing while you were traveling? Okay, so I always wrote after Scotland. I never write in my locations. Because you have to like take it all in, I feel like. Yeah, also, true. when I started writing, um, truly breaking time, was when the 2016 election was happening, and oh. I was too uh, depressed to actually write. <laughs> um, but um, after that, I was empowered to. Um, and I wrote my story. But it's so weird. Now that I live there, I'm kind of like, cool. Meanwhile, beforehand, I was like, what is Scotland? <laughs> I'm so close to Scotland. I'm eight hours away. And now I'm like, I'm eight hours away. <laughs> Let me just hop in the train. It's, lost, it's magic? No. I it hasn't. No, I it's like, that's why I, everybody else awesome. always asks me why I did not move to Scotland. Yeah. Because I do not we want to live. have a loose magic. Because mm. it's so beautiful. Mm -hmm. So, um, actually, my partner and I were going up there um, in the next month, I think. Nice. Where? Um, Edinburgh? Or? We have no idea. Yeah. But we want to take the three minute flight. <laughs> me. I, I um, would do that too. And uh, we're taking like um, Your like carbon a footprint is going to be so bad. <laughs> yeah. Three minute flight. Three You're like, was Elon Musk, Musk, Musk on the news because he took his jet plane from his house to like a Starbucks or something? I feel like I read a news what? story about that. Well, we, I thought oh, we canceled gosh. Elon Musk like two years ago. You what? I canceled him like two you years ago. You canceled him. I thought you didn't talk to him. I was like, what? what? Oh, we're canceled. What did you say? You're canceled. Sorry, thank you. Not even sorry. You're canceled. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Um, so you know, you're but, going um, up to Scotland. Is this research for book two? No. Or? No. Just, Just for a trip. Nice. Um, I'm having a no work trip for the first time yeah. ever. You just did <laughs> I just stopped myself from working. I'm off my um, job right now, and I still work. For she it. was working, and yeah, she was in the trains. Yeah. Working. Oh, it never ends. Oh. I know. It never ends, but you know, when you love what you do, of course, that's what matters. Yeah. So yeah. 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 There's a question in the back. Hey, two comments, if that's okay. Sure. Number one, three years in the making. We are going to Ireland, London, and Scotland next month. Oh wow! And, and my, I can't believe you told me those Highland cows are aggressive. Because that is like my. <laughs> They're not they're so they're not cute. Cute. It's the other cows. Cause I'm, they're with I'm them. Like, yeah, I have to sell them. No, no. Be be wary. The other cows, they will get you. Wait, I thought you said the Highland coos were the aggressive they ones. They are, but like, okay, so they're intermixed with the other cows. Oh, okay. Oh. oh they will so get you, okay. but they're not necessarily aggressive. Yeah. But there was one that charged me. Um, oh, okay. They will okay. enter the road okay. if you're in the, um in uh, Isle Sky. Uh huh. They will. Are they just bitter? So just don't come to No, they're just mad that you're in their space, and honestly, I can't blame oh. them. And my other comment is, um, I'm a special ed teacher, and we're working where I do students with disabilities, and I have like all sorts of like sayings, but can I steal your superpower? Can I bring that back to them and, and say that? To Please do. I would love that. I would love that, because yeah, like, I wish that people talk about um, learning disabilities as superpowers. Um, because they are. They're amazing. <laughs> Please do, because okay, it's the best one. word, and I still feel like it's a superpower. Yeah. Thank you for all you do. Yeah. Thank, you. Way, Thank you. All um, teachers. I've had many specialized teachers. All teachers. teachers. Especially during this pandemic. <laughs>
By the way, my high school teacher, guys, is right there, Mr. Ah! C. Right there. You're not going to escape today. No. no. What was he like in high school? Oh, God. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> was he a good writer? He was naughty. You don't have to answer that. So he was my art teacher, actually. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I went to a technical school where you got to do regular classes one week, and then the other week it was just your course. Yeah. So he would have me for days. And yeah, and that's where I knew I wanted to be an artist. Great. Wow, look yeah. at that. Someone's so well, you did him well. Perfect. Well, a, look where you are now. I was a great student. Wasn't I, Mr. Seda? <laughs> <laughs> you were. You're holding him at gunpoint. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, Jiggy did my first book. Um, yeah, yeah, we worked on, on that cover. Yeah. Just working for yeah. books today. So yeah. collaborative. I love it. Yeah. So, any other questions? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but one last one. When's, so you said there's two books, right? Yes. Book one, when's book two coming out? That's a great question. That's my question, too. Do you have, like, a roughly... Um, so I'm writing it right now. Um, it should be out next year, this time. Next year sometime. Yeah, Ooh. so I'm and a little bit faster FF. now. FF. Um, the title is FF. FF. Can you give us any, like, tiny hints about what it'll be? Or something <laughs> Fracturing that's going to be... Fate. What? <laughs> what? Oh. I didn't mean the title. I meant, like, a hint. I always blow my titles. <laughs> It's fine. Um, she did that. She I did that one. She 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 did she did a live, I mean, and I gave her that. a painting, and this said breaking time. <laughs> yeah, I know. So I wanted to find out. She's like, secret title. It's right there. It, it's Brock Shrine Kate, and I'm really excited about I it. I love um, it. That's such a cool title. I did not come up with it. It was my yeah, wonderful yeah. editor. Yeah. So I was like, I don't know what to name this book, and I'll take another six yeah. years to decide. Do you guys have, like, a cover sketch or anything yet? Do you know what I want two of them on the cover. You want two people on the cover? Just like it was when uh, JD designed the original cover. Oh, nice. Oh, oh, that, oh, I've yeah, seen that. They're, they're yeah, back to back, yeah. right? Yeah. I like I that cover. That. Very yeah. cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so yeah. awesome. So, things are under so next year, in the meantime, next um, yeah, read all of our books. Excellent. Okay. Yay. Yeah. Well, thank you guys so much for being here. Thank you so much for coming.